I defeated the Arch Glacier boss over 60,000 times on my Iron Man account. And in this video, I will show you all the loot and rewards in detail. I will also show you the exact methods I used to achieve this KC without wasting any supplies. This video took a long time to make and to celebrate that I'm finally releasing it, I'm giving away three bonds and a Barrow's die. Check out the pinned comment to see exactly how you can get a chance to win these. So why exactly did I choose to do this much Arch Glacier? What am I trying to get out of this? GP? XP? Materials? Something else entirely? Well, to be honest, the Arch Glacier doesn't truly excel in any single one of these categories, but as you'll soon see, it does provide in all of these categories, which makes it one of the best AFK activities in the game, assuming you need all of these rewards. Before we get into the massive loot that I've received, I do want to talk about the setup a little bit. The first thing I should note is, obviously these skills weren't hard mode, they weren't with a ton of mechanics, this was done on low mechanic, so I could AFK all of these. A lot of people debate on whether 0 or 1 mechanics is the best way to go about AFKing the Arch Claysaur, and I've done a ton of both to be honest, but I will tell you why I prefer zero mechanics and why over 55,000 of my KC has been on zero mechanics. Surprisingly to me, one mechanic Arch Glacier is actually the more popular method, but the way I see things, there's only two reasons you would prefer this. One is the fact that you will never move from the initial spot where you're standing AFK, so you never have to move back. The other reason is that you technically get slightly more common loot by doing one mechanic, but honestly the difference is quite minuscule. So then why do I personally prefer zero mechanics? Well it all boils down to the simple fact that you get more kills in a given hour. And because you get more kills, the quantity of common loot ends up being quite similar. Uh, on top of that, you get more charms, because that's linked to 2kc, you get more effigies, which is really nice, you get more Triskelion keys, and you get faster kc for the pet. Uh, either to get the pet, or to just get a nice high kc on your pet examine. And finally, you also get more Zamorak reroll dice. As you'll soon see, all of these are very nice. Let's have a look at the setup that I used for AFKing the Arch Glacier. When you are doing AFK combat, you can optimize for three setup factors. One is kills per hour. That's pretty self-explanatory. The next one is how AFK something is. And then finally, sustainability. This is essentially how many supplies you use. Let's have a look at the setup that is provided by the wonderful folks at the PVME. This setup has been optimized for the highest amount of KC in an hour. If that is the only thing you care about, then this is the setup that you should be going for. However, while this is optimized for KC an hour, it is not the most AFK and it is not the most sustainable method. And for me as an Ironman, that is what I care about the most. Over all my time doing this boss, I have slowly taken out anything and everything that reduces AFK ability or sustainability. To be clear, all these changes I've made are losing me KC an hour, but after making all these changes, I have zero upkeep cost, so I never have to go gather or create any supplies. I also never bank stand anymore because I can essentially load my preset and be in an instance in like a couple seconds. I also never have any commitment of potions or familiars keeping me there for longer than I want to be there. If I'm gonna do group EVM and I'm just waiting for a team to fill up, I can just be in an Arch Glacier instance instantly and just grind some KC on the side. So this is the setup that I ended up using in the end. I imagine a lot of normal accounts won't really need to cut out all of these supplies, especially the viable ones as they can just 
buy them on the GE for minimal time loss. I use a scripture of when, and even while I have used it throughout all of this KC, because you get so many pages here anyway, I've built up over 7,000 pages at this point. For my weapons, I use the tier 95 Lang offhand and then the Scourge mainhand for the bleed effect. Cinderbanes work here and obviously that makes them best in slot. Uh, I personally stopped using weapon poison as it's just annoying to upkeep and I would have used so many of them throughout all of this time, but it's still worth using the gloves themselves. I also use the Vestments of Havoc from Zamorak. Uh, this is obviously the best DPS armor in the game, uh, and that's why I'm wearing it. Notably though, as part of my efforts to make it more sustainable, I actually use a duplicate set that I got from the boss, uh, which is unaugmented, so it will save me a ton of charges over all of these skills. I don't use an EOF here because it's simply not worth the upkeep cost. And with that, we can have a look at the inventory. As you can see, I don't have any overloads, I don't have any weapon poison, I simply don't have any potions in here. The only potion I do have is charming potions. Uh, they give some more charms, which the Archglacer does drop a lot of. And the only reason I'm using these is because I have them lying around from my Herbler training. Outside of that, I do have some super restores in here, but most of the times I use the Penance Aura, which means these will not be used at all. These are just in here in case my Penance Aura is off cooldown. Uh, when that happens, it's also slightly less AFK, but most of the times I do use the Penance Aura anyway. Then you can fill up the rest of the inventory with all the single items that Archglacer drops, so that you never have to fiddle with your inventory, they just go straight in there. So that's the setup, and with it you can expect to defeat about 65 Archglacers in an hour. Let's talk about mobile versus PC. I've done a bunch of Arch Glacier on both of these, and I've figured out a couple of pros and cons of each. A great benefit of PC is the Alt-1 AFK Warden. You can basically set it up to ping you whenever either you get any drops, or when you get a special drop that you care about, uh, such as an effigy or such. Uh, and it's really nice because it makes it even more AFK, you just have to check when you get a ping. On top of this, unlike mobile, the loot interface will actually stay and remain open, even when there is no longer any loot on the ground. This is really nice because you can just Alt-Tab back to your client, press space to pick everything up, and you're good to go. The benefits of mobile is that with a larger loot interface, it doesn't matter if you move around a little bit like you do with Zero Mechanics Arch Glacier. However, on PC, this can be somewhat mitigated by summoning a Lorehound pet, which also does increase your loot range somewhat. It's also just nice to have mobile as an option, because a portable device can be taken anywhere, and you can just do some AFK activities anywhere. Considering the changes to death costs this year, this point is no longer as relevant to talk about, but I thought I'd still mention it. Unless you're doing hard mode, Arch Glacier is actually a safe death, which means that Hardcore Iron Man can totally do this completely safe, as well as you'll never have to pay any death costs. If you are using Penance Aura with the setup I provided, you will never die here, but without it you sometimes will if you AFK a bit too hard and let your prayer drain. So it's nice that when you die here, you just spawn right out of the instance and you can hop right back in when you notice it. I know this sounds like a small time save, but this has saved me plenty of time and annoyance over all these kills. I've been using rune metrics to keep track of all the loot I've received here, so let's have a look at everything. Let's get started by having a look at the total GP rewards, as I'm sure that's the first thing we all think about when we look at a loot video. If we exclusively look at direct GP drops, we obtained a total of 366 million GP. I used the gold accumulator, which picked up all the gold for me, so I was actually quite surprised when I saw that it added up to this much over time. If we add the alkabils, such as the water battle staves and oracalcum salvage to the GP, it rises to 1.7 billion in total. That's not a bad cash tag for an Ironman by purely AFKing. In total, all the loot adds up to over 4 billion GP if we sell it on the Grand Exchange. 
I also obtained over 9,000 Elder Troves, and if we open them, that adds another 2 billion GP to the loot value. If you are looking for a more detailed video on these troves, I actually already uploaded a separate video to this channel doing a deep dive analysis on all the amazing supplies that I got from these. I'll make sure to link that in the description. But for the purposes of this video, you can just know that the troves brought up the value to over 6 billion GP in total. Here you can see some of the loot that I still have. I already used some of it by alking or creating supplies with it and all that stuff. Uh, but this is all the stuff that I still have. It's a pretty nice amount of loot, especially considering I never even did Arched Glacier for any of this stuff in the first place. I was mainly interested in all the other benefits, so let's talk about those. I should also touch on the XP I got from this boss, because I think it might be more than some people suspect. The most obvious XP you get from this boss is obviously combat XP, and over 60,000 of them, I received a total of 685 million combat experience in the specific style you choose, um, as well as 225 million constitution XP. Now let's talk about effigies, because effigies alone might be the reason for some people to start doing this boss as an AFK activity. For those who aren't aware how effigies work, when you get one, you can open them in four steps, after which you get a sizable XP lamp. Each step requires you to choose one out of two skills, after which you will get experience in that chosen skill. While it is random which pairs you get, the skills that are paired together are always the same, and here you can see all the eight pairs of possible skills. These are the skills that I personally chose to put my XP in, but remember that if you decide to do this as well, you can choose these other skills as well. The experience you get for opening an effigy is 90,000, and it will average out across all of these skills. Throughout this whole grind, I gained a grand total of 665 effigies, which means I gained a free 60 million XP shared across them, which averaged out to 7.5 million XP in each of my chosen skills. And on top of this, I put all the Dragonkin lamps I got from the effigies into agility. This totaled to an additional 32 million XP, bringing the total to almost 40 million. And the best thing about these is that you can choose to put the XP in any skill you prefer. Obviously, the XP per hour isn't that great at all, but it might be a good alternative for skills that don't really have a solid AFK option. I also gained some indirect XP in the form of supplies. First off, uncut dragonstones made up about 5.5 million crafting XP, and on top of that I gained 350,000 of both blue and crimson charms, which is enough to get 200 million in summoning twice over. The summoning focus and water talisman you also get from this boss also really help in actually using the charms. Marks of War can be obtained by defeating any boss, which includes the Arch Glacier of course. And over all my KC here, I have received close to a million Works of War. These marks can be exchanged at War's Retreat for a bunch of different PVM supplies. Assuming you already own the Auras, you will likely use these for life refreshes and aura refreshes. Personally, I chose to redeem a mix of mostly life refreshes and tier 2 aura refreshes. Those are the cheapest aura refreshes which still allow you to reset penance auras. And considering that's the aura I always used at Arch Glacier, that's the one I was using the most. Tier 3 refreshes are also a great choice if you are looking to do a more focused PVM and you want to reset your maniacal auras and such. Uh, but I already had plenty of them and I haven't been doing as much active PVM, so I didn't buy as many of those. Let's talk about the boss's unique drops. Considering I did this in normal mode with no mechanics, the only uniques I could actually get were Glacor Fragments, Anima, and Dark Nihilus. Initially, these Dark Nihilus were actually the main reason why I started AFKing the Arch Glacier. I had gotten extremely lucky on Frozen Core drops, and I actually got four of them in the first week of release by doing Low and Rage over and over, before they changed the drop rates to be more favorable to Streaking and High and Rages. 
So after doing hard mode to complete my weapon set, I decided to create the remaining two cores into weapons as well by AFKing normal mode as long as it took. Since then I gained 90 Dark Nylas and 95,000 Glacor Fragments, which is plenty to create both of the weapons I wanted to create. I also gained over 7 million Anima, which could be converted into a ton of Elder God Arrows. At this point, the log is looking pretty good, and as a bit of a flex, I actually keepsake the spare main hand just so I can use it as an override while I'm using the Abyssal Scourge. I use the spare offhand to put on some perks that are useful for opening clue scrolls. Speaking of which... The Arch Glacer is pretty decent at giving clue scrolls as well. It drops elite clue scrolls directly, but it also drops Crystal Crystallion Keys, which can be opened and have a guaranteed elite clue scroll in them every single time. In total, from pure clue drops, I got 2000 elite clue scrolls. I also gained 1500 Crystallion Keys, which brings our total to 3500 elite clue scrolls. The great thing about those Crystallion Keys, by the way, is that they stack indefinitely. You will never hit any cap as long as you don't actually open the Crystallion Keys. Let me know if you're interested in videos on these, by the way. Finally, last but not least, the Chaos Dice reroll tokens. If you don't know what these are, these drop from all the Elder God Wars bosses and they allow you to reroll loot at Zemorak. And considering you can AFK to get these, you can kind of think of this as AFKing some Zemorak KC on the side. I personally got over 400 Zemorak reroll tokens, but a lot of that was gotten before these were nerfed. If I had to guess, if I did everything after the nerf, I would probably have ended up with around 200 or 300 of these. I have already used a ton of these reroll tokens to get the collection lock at Zemorak, but I also have plenty of them left for a future loot video. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And you know what? Here's a little sneak peek. This has gone on long enough. Chaos unfettered.